how are you? Still not feeling good. But it's not bad. It's better day by day. Um, our chapter. Plan B. Let's recap. Because the last episode, from what I can remember, I think Jasmine was going into labor because her water broke in the elevator now as far as what happened in the last ep in the last chapter can't really remember but it will refresh our memory as we read our chapter today so let's not waste no time let's just get into our story so with our story plan b i'm assuming that we are on chapter 11 now if not i will put the right chapter down here but i think we're in chapter 11 now you're now laying on a stretcher with an IV drip in your arms for the pain as you are raced towards the maternity room. So yeah, her water did break. So we're actually going to meet. Oh, I think that Eva and Ryan were going to apologize to one of their, I guess, customers or, you know, they did a project that I think that Miss Don't Change Her Dress had destroyed and blaming on us. So it was, yeah, see, I'm, I'm remembering the story as we go. So they're assuming that it was Jasmine's fault that this whole project has got messed up. And she went into labor and Ryan doesn't even know. I don't even even know if he knows now right now. I hope Ryan comes soon. So she did tell him. So she called him. I called him from the ambulance and he said he'd be right here, but I hope he's not too late. Yeah, because he you want him to see the baby come out. You don't want him to miss, especially if that's his first child. You want to be there for the birth. You don't want to miss that. Your baby trembled from the pain. Your body trembled from the pain and you focus on the lamps on the ceiling as you try to stay calm i'm going to meet my little butterfly soon and this will be all worth it yep because you carried your little baby for nine months and now it's time for you to see her precious little face not even 20 minutes later you're laying in the delivery room doing your best to deliver the baby Ryan stands by your side, his hand holding yours slightly. So Ryan made it. Thanks for telling us, Jasmine. My hair's sticking up. All right, Jasmine. Push. Already? What happened to... Did she need epidural? I mean, is she doing this naturally? I'm assuming. You're almost there. Ah! Don't mind my scream. I know that wasn't a perfect scream, okay? It's worse than that. You scream in pain as you push with as much energy as you muster, even though you feel completely exhausted. Come on, push harder. I'm trying. Look, you try pushing a watermelon out of your body. You try pushing. We're not going to say that to the nurse because I'm pretty sure... They have kids too. We're going to just say it hurts. Ryan gives you gives your hand a firm squeeze and you squeeze his hand back even harder. You're doing great, Jasmine. I can't even imagine what you're going through. Oh, yeah. No man could imagine what a woman has to go through to push a baby's head out of her private parts. Just focus on our butterfly. You're almost there. You push through the pain, feeling absolutely exhausted. I can imagine. I see the head. Keep going. The head? I can't remember. It, I know the head is the hardest part. And I think the shoulders are too because the shoulders are wide. After that, it's with ease. Ah! Ah! You scream as you push with all your might. Congratulations, you did it. I want to see the baby. 
This is your baby girl, so be sure to choose the one who you love most. Oh, we get to choose our baby? Let's see. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Why do y'all look the same? But we're choosing this one. Choose your baby's face. I was hoping that they had like a mixed baby because Ryan is on the lighter side and Jasmine is on the darker side. So unless they did have one and I just bypassed it because they all look the same. The baby's cries fill the room as you collapse back on the bed. You're, you're aware of Ryan stroking your hair as you start to drift off. That's kind of how I was when they were trying to show me my baby, but I was just like out of it. But I had to go through three C-sections to have all of my kids. So that's like a different experience. I've never had the experience of actually pushing my baby out. So I don't know. You did a great job, beautiful. Get some rest. And you go play with the baby. You're not sure how long you've been sleeping when you groggily blink your eyes open groggy groggily obviously i cannot speak today you're awake you turn your head to see ryan by your side holding your hand how long was i asleep a few hours you were clearly exhausted how's the baby very healthy our baby is a girl Oh uh, yeah, Jasmine actually told us that information when we thought we couldn't get that information already, so we knew it was a girl. But thank you for letting us know again. Oh, that's so exciting. You look at Ryan with a huge smile, tears welling in your eyes. Our daughter. We need to come up with a name for her. Any ideas? Your choice may impact your relationship with the decision you make could even determine her fate. How? What should we name our beautiful daughter? I do not know. So, Jasmine, Ryan what would they name their baby girl i don't know maybe i'm gonna leave it at amelia because i'm not good with picking names okay uh i'm gonna just go with amelia because that's what they put there how about amelia that's a beautiful name Ryan carefully helps you sit up and you look around the room suddenly realizing that the baby isn't there. Where is she? Where's Amelia? Relax, Chesman. Since she was born three weeks earlier, they expected that then expected she's been moved to the incubator. So she was not supposed to have the baby yet. Okay. She's perfectly safe and healthy. There's nothing to worry about. I just feel like my hair is just sticking up right now. You let out a sigh of relief and, and rest in your head on Ryan's chest as he pulls you into his side. We've been through so much over the past few weeks. I can't believe our butterfly is really here. Neither can I. You look up into Ryan's eyes and he kisses the tip of your nose. I've really loved going through this with you, Jasmine. I can't imagine ever doing this with anyone else. And not even Eva. Because you don't know that she's trying to get pregnant. He doesn't know that. Neither can I. As you look into Ryan's eyes, you can't help but wonder what your what your baby looks like. Ryan and I just created a life. I really want to meet her. 
Ryan, can we go visit our daughter? I'm tired. I'm going to sleep. Did I forget to get jumps before I came into the story? Or did they just not give me any? So, I guess Jasmine will see her baby when they bring her back. You yawn and look at Ryan through heavy lidded eyes. I'm exhausted. Ryan chuckles softly and kisses the top of your head. After what you just went through, I'm not surprised. Ryan stands up, then carefully helps you lie back down before tucking you in. Have a good rest, Jasmine. I'm going to go check on our daughter. Yes, please. Ryan smiles at you, then leaves the room as you drift back off to sleep. Which I can really use right now because I'm just tired all the time. Due to the complications with your birth, you kept, you've kept in the hospital for a few days. It's now a few days later and Ryan comes to visit. Since you're feeling a little bit better, you've decided to go get some fresh air. This hospital gardens are actually quite lovely. Yes, I guess they wanted to create a nice, tranquil space where patients and visitors can feel at peace. Ryan holds your hand as you both slowly walk along the footpath that want, that wind between the trees and flower beds. Remember the doctor said you still need to take it easy. Let me know if you want to sit down. Ryan, I'm really feeling fine. I will. Thank you. We're just going to say we will. Thank you. Thank you for your concern, Ryan. I feel okay, but I haven't done anything physical since I was admitted to the hospital, so I'm not sure what I can handle. I wish I didn't have to keep leaving your, your side, but I can't stay away from the office forever. You suddenly have an awful sinking feeling in your gut. You've been trying to forget about the automobile company screwing up but you need to know how bad it is. Ryan, how's everything going with the automobile company? Ryan sighs and stops walking as he turns to face you. I won't lie to you, Jasmine. The loss was indeed huge and the client's not very happy. So they did get to see the client and they did get to apologize while Jasmine was going into labor. But apparently it's still a huge mistake. But it's nothing for you to worry about. Eva's working on it. You left it for Eva to deal with. And she possibly could be the one that messed it up. It was my mess, so I, sh I should fix it. I still want to be involved. We're not going to say it's our mess because I still believe it was Eva. So we're just going to say you want to be involved. I created the original design, so I'd still like to be involved in any changes. I understand, Jasmine, but you really don't need to worry. You just gave birth. You should focus on resting and bonding with Amelia. I guess you're right. You sigh, still feeling incredibly crappy about the situation. Ryan squeezes your shoulder reassuringly. It will all work out don't worry by the way my mother came to visit you and amelia after after you gave birth curse came to visit me i understand why she want to see amelia but your mother doesn't exactly like me hold on my daughter's crying so my baby girl is also um not feeling as well either and i don't know if it's because i am actually the one who took care of her the most and gave her a cold i don't know but she's looking for me so let me hurry up with the video i understand why she wants to see amelia but your mother doesn't exactly like me ryan runs a hand through his hair sheepishly you know, Jasmine, I don't think my mother hates you as much as you think she does. She really did want to check in on you, 
post-birth, maybe after you get out of the hospital, the two of you can sit down and talk. We don't want to talk with your mother because, like we said, the only reason why she would even want to talk to Jasmine is because she still thinks that I should leave you with the child so that the child and you can inherit it, whatever y'all got going on with the company. No, we don't want to hear that. So, no, we're okay. If Carse really did come to check on me, then maybe she has good intentions. Do you think? Then again, she does always seem to have an ult a ulterior motive. Well, we're not sure if we can trust her. And I don't even know if we want to tell Ryan that. Because again, that is his mother. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the best Jasmine can do is try. I don't know. We'll see. Trying is probably still gonna bring up that subject, but we'll try. I'd be happy to put the past behind us if she is. That's great. All I want is for you both to at least try. See, I knew that's what he wanted. As you think about Carse, your thoughts suddenly drift to the building model Carse design that inspired Ryan to become an architect. Oh my gosh, I think I have an idea. What are you thinking, Jasmine? I can see the gears in your head working from here. I just thought of a solution for the automobile company. I know you told me not to worry about it, but let me create the plan and offer the client a plan B. So is that why the store is called plan B? Cause I thought plan B was because of the pregnancy. You know that plan, oh, never mind, never mind. See, I'm already thinking other stuff and that's not even what the story was about. Plan B is because it's another option. All right, Jasmine, you seem confident about this, and I trust you. You could come up with a solution on your own, but please don't stress yourself out. Ryan takes both your hands, <clears throat> sorry, in, it, <clears throat> in his, and he looks into your eyes. Your health is important to me. I don't want you to get sick because of work. Don't worry, Ryan. I'll look after myself. Ryan smiles at you, then gently strokes your cheek. You're really something, you know? I'm going to make sure our little butterfly knows that her mother is a superhero. Well, thank you. After spending some time outside, you and Ryan head back to your hospital ward. Just as you're getting into bed, the nurse walks in with your baby in her arms. So we get to hold her, our baby now. Amelia, how's she been doing, nurse? Your daughter is doing fantastic. She should be ready to be released from the hospital very soon. That's good to hear. That's always good to hear. She was a little restless, so I thought I'd bring her here to see if some cuddles with her mother and father would help. The nurse smiles at you and holds the baby towards you. You look at her cute little face and you feel your heart swell as you listen to her soft murmuring. <clears throat> I actually miss that, having a newborn, but I don't want to have another kid because I get no rest. <clears throat> it almost sounds like she's saying mom, even though I know that's impossible. Your heart aches and you desperately want to hold your child. I should. Are y'all serious? Y'all want me to use gems just to cuddle my baby. Are y'all serious? Oh, Lord. Actually, could you please take her back to the newborn room? I am mad that was even an option for Jims to cuddle her baby. That was an option. I think she just needs to sleep. As you wish. 
And when do babies start staying in the newborn room? I thought I thought babies stay in the room with the parent. After that, the nurse takes your baby back to the newborn room. Then you notice your neck band, your neck band is a little messy and some milk ink on your shirt. Oh, it must be the last time I was trying to feed Amelia. You look at Ryan, who certainly notices too, because you can tell his eyes are darker than usual. I haven't got time to clean it up. Ryan smiles and plays innocent. I didn't say anything. Oh, interesting. You look at him in a flirtatious way and Ryan's smiles, smile gets bigger. He fetches a towel, passing it to you, but before you reach it, he pulls his arm back. How about letting me help you with the cleaning? Oh, this is how tempting. I mean, he just had some family time. It's not bad to have some private time with Ryan. And we don't have gems, so do it yourself. You take the towel from his hand and clean your breasts up. You get a bit sleepy after everything you do today. And Ryan needs to head for the office to have a meeting. Ryan kisses you goodbye on your face. You feel happy that now you have such a sweet family. I f a few days later, you and Amelia are ready to be discharged and Ryan comes to pick you both up. After changing into something more comfortable, you excitedly drag Ryan down the hall towards the newborn room. And it's so pretty. I can't believe we finally get to go home with Amelia. Ryan squeezes your hand and you can see the excitement mirror in his eyes. I can't wait to start our little family. You grin at him, then excitedly approach the nurse guarding the newborn room. Hey, I'm Jasmine Davis. I'm here to pick up my daughter. Davis, you say. Actually, yes, the baby has my surname. No, the baby has Ryan's surname. Who was Davis actually? Was that Ryan? I mean, I don't even know their last name. And she's not even married to Ryan. So, we're just going to say Ryan. We're just going to we're just going to say that we gave the baby Ryan's last name. It's Wilson Amelia. It's Wilson Amelia Wilson. Okay, so her name is Amelia Wilson. We gave her her dad's last name. The nurse looked at her computer screen then looks at both you and Ryan in shock. Amelia's already been collected. Her father came just moments ago and took her away. What? Now you know that that was Jasmine's baby, and yet you still let her go with whatever stranger you just... How is that even possible? He had all the right information, so I didn't even think... You didn't even think because obviously you know it didn't look like the same father that was in the room before. I swear nurses, some nurses, I'm not going to say all, some nurses just don't deserve to work. I don't know. The nurse looked at Ryan in confusion and you feel the blood drain from your face. I'm the baby's father and I definitely didn't pick up our daughter up. I can't believe it. Someone took our baby. You gave my baby away at least without at least checking her id Ugh. i can imagine what jasmine feel like right now why are you this incompetent incom do you at least have information on the father yeah do you this is important i need to know who took our baby Oof. well he had he was about the same age as the two of you and maybe around 5 feet 11. That better not be Gary. 
That better not be Gary, who pretended to be Amelia's father and took the baby. If, oh my gosh. Not bad looking, although he looked pretty stressed out. I figured it was just from becoming a new father. He also had dark brown hair. You stare at the nurse in shock as you start to put the pieces together. Gary, it has to be Gary. That's what I said. Gary just stole Jess. He's been stalking her to the day she had this baby. Now she's had the baby and the baby's gone with Gary. And he's been gone this whole chapter. And this is how he comes out. You turn to Ryan panicking. Ryan, I think my ex-boyfriend took our baby. You know he had all these gambling de debts. He probably kidnapped her to blackmail us. If it was your ex, he would have harmed Amelia since he needs her to be healthy. Okay, he won't have harmed Amelia since he needs her to be healthy if he's using her for ransom. You find Gary's number in your phone and unblock him before dialing. That's definitely him. He has brown hair. Well, look who decided to unblock me. What do you want, Jasmine? Shouldn't you be playing happy families or something? Stop talking, Gary. I know you kidnapped my daughter. Where the... Where is she? Hang on. Don't accuse me of that. You have no proof. That's slander. Well, the nurse said brown hair and you have brown hair. She doesn't know no one else that has brown hair. I didn't kidnap your daughter. Knowing you, you probably put her down somewhere and just misplaced her. No, no, you took my baby. You burst into tears as Ryan takes the phone from your hand. If you're the person who took our baby, you won't get away with it. This hospital has cameras. Well, then I hope you find the person responsible because it wasn't me. The line goes dead. So is it Gary or who else has brown hair that Jasmine knows? There's no one else we know with brown hair besides Gary. He hung up. You stare at Ryan in horror, your heart racing frantically as you start to feel faint. Where is my baby? I feel so helpless. Maybe we should call the police. If it was Gary who took her, he might hurt her if he called the cops. If we call the cops. You burst into tears and bury your head in your hands. I haven't even left the hospital yet and I'm already a failure as a mother. No, it's not your fault. It is the nurse's fault. Ryan wraps his arms around you and soothingly strokes your back. None of this is your fault, Jasmine. We're going to find her, but you need to stay strong. You won't be able to think clearly if you're panicking. You took a deep breath and tried to pull yourself together. Ryan's right. I need to get it together and think of what to do. If I focus, I know I can find a way to track down my baby. I should... Stop giving me gems, please. You're making this chapter hard. You burst into uncontrollable tears again as panic overcomes you. My baby. Ryan gently strokes your back, but it does little to comfort you. We need to go look at that security footage. With any luck, we'll be able to see who took our baby. After talking to security, you and Ryan got get took into the surveillance room. You look through the footage, but don't see any sign of Gary or any footage of someone taking your baby. It has to be here somewhere. We're wasting too much time. You think of, you think for a moment, then thought. Then a thought strikes you. 
Ryan, Gary was very calm and worry-free on the phone. If he was the person who took our baby, he would have been asking for ransom. That's true. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that he may have already been paid. Ryan thinks for a moment, then you watch as the blood drains from his face. The only person I can think of who might be interested in this baby that can afford it is his mother. And Carse visits Jasmine, and now all of a sudden the baby's gone. You know that it's actually adding up? Let's go see her right now. If your mother kidnapped our baby, I'll never forgive her. Now that you think about it, Gary probably did take the baby and gave it to Carse. And she paid him to do it. You and Ryan rushed to Carse's house where you found her outside by the swimming pool drinking wine and sunbathing. Mother. Carse looks up in surprise. Oh, I didn't expect to see you two. I can't tell if she's generally surprised or if she's faking it. Nine out of ten, she's probably faking. Carse reaches for a bottle of wine and holds it up. Would you like a glass? It's from Eva's family vineyard. Her brother just stopped by to apologize for Eva's infertility. Carse, why don't um, we don't want any of that stupid wine? No one should need to apologize for something Eva can't control. Um, we're gonna um leave Eva out of this because we're just gonna say we don't want the wine. We have more important things to worry about. You step towards Carse, your body shaking with anger, and look her straight in the eyes. Where is our baby? What are you talking about? Perse sits up and looks generally confused. Isn't the baby still at the hospital? I really can't figure out if she's clueless or a good actress. Amelia was supposed to be discharged today, but someone pretended to be Ryan and kidnapped her. We know you're involved, so tell us where she is. Excuse me? How dare you accuse me of kidnapping my grandchild? You clearly can't even look after your own child, yet you're here throwing false accusations around? All right, we don't have time for this. You scroll through your phone until you find a photo of Gary, then shove your phone in Kersay's face. Did you recognize, do you recognize this man? Kersay looks at the photo, then looks at you in shock. Recognition in her eyes. Mm hmm I do. I saw him getting out of Eva's car the other day, but I just thought he was her driver. Eva? You turned to... Did Eva steal Jasmine's baby because she can't have one? So maybe I underestimated her say, I'm sorry. So maybe she is confused. Eva. You turn to Ryan in horror. Could Eva have taken Amelia? She certainly has the funds to afford it. We have to find her. You race back to Ryan's car. Then after you both get in, you turn to him in distress. I can't believe Eva would do this, go this far. I know she didn't like me, but who would kidnap an innocent baby? Let me call her. If she's behind this, then I'm sure there's something she wants. Ryan picks up his phone and calls Eva, but there's no answer. Okay, now I'm convinced that Eva has taken the baby because she couldn't have one. She has low fertility. She can't have a baby. So she steals Jasmine's baby. 
and she knows that Ryan was coming to the hospital because Eva, I mean, Jasmine was about to have her baby. Can you call her family? Someone, anyone, someone has to know where, who she is. You start to panic, your breathing getting erratic. I'll call Eva's parents right now. Ryan reaches out and gives your hand a reassuring squeeze, but it does little to calm you down. Don't worry, Jasmine. I'll do everything it takes until we find her. Ryan dials a bunch of different numbers until he eventually reaches Eva's brother. You turn to listen to the conversation, but you're panicking so much that you can barely make it out. Great. Thank you so much. Ryan ends the call and turns back to face you. Eva's brother said that Eva mentioned a concluding project and that she needs to go recap the fruit. Re, reap the fruit, whatever that means. She's probably just talking about her deal with Gary to steal our baby. I knew Eva hated me, but I never thought she'd go this far. You pick your phone up, your hand shaking slightly, and send Eva a text. Eva, I know you have my baby. I know you hate me, but please let her go. We're not going to say nothing about the cops because we don't want to make the situation worse than what it is. So we're just going to say, please let her go. I'll do anything you want. You stare at your phone in desperation, waiting for Eva to respond. A response comes already instantly, and it's a, pitch, it's a picture message. Oh. What's that? Oh, a picture from Eva. Eva sent a picture message, and it's from the construction site for the automobile company. Just then, a text comes through. Eva, let's read it. Where's the message? If you ever want to see your baby alive again, come here alone. What do Eva got going on? Ryan drives you to the automobile company, but you convince him to stay in the car. If I show up with Ryan, Eva might hurt Amelia since she told me to come alone. You enter the site cautionally due to the, uh, the material problem. The site is temporarily shut down and there's a lot of tape everywhere. Eva, where are you? As you enter the lobby, you, you spot Eva leaning against a pillar with a glass of wine in her hand. Well, it's nice to see you, Jasmine. And you're still wearing the same dress. Seeing that look on your face just makes his this wine even more palatable. Eva, please give me my daughter back, or I'll make sure you go to jail until you die. I'll give you anything you want. I promise I won't tell anyone about this. If we say we're going to give her everything she wants, that might be a bad choice. We're just going to say, we promise we're not going to say anything. We just want our baby. This can just stay between us and I won't get the police involved. Please, as if I care about that. I've already lost everything. Carse abandoned me. Ryan doesn't even look at me anymore. And my family all just think I'm a useless burden because I'm infer infertile. Infertile. There's nothing you can threaten me with that will make me my situation worse. Eva, none of this is my fault. Oh, on the contrary, Jasmine, this is all entirely your fault. Eva looks at you venomously and starts to raise her voice. Hatred dripping from every word. None of this would have happened if it weren't for you. I should have asked those gangsters to kidnap you in the alleyway. Then you would have been out of my life. Wait, what? Did y'all remember the time that Eva was walking from, where was that, the bar? 
and those two uh can't remember their name right now met her in the alleyway that was it's eva's that was eva she set that up what eva was the one behind the attack i really thought you would have lost that stupid child when i pushed you down the stairs but no <gasps> and she pushed now everything is coming together eva was behind every last hard thing that jasmine had to go through and we're finding it out right now you just somehow managed to get through everything unscattered unscattered don't you since apparently i can't do anything to you i had to use your child instead eva the baby is innocent what sick person would involve an infant in their re revenge plot? Well, I'm finally getting something I wanted. I'm getting to see your face as you start to lose everything. She smirks at you and you can really see the craziness eliminated, illuminating in her eyes. You're going to lose your child and now that you don't have a baby, you surely lose Ryan too. No. All you're going to do is make Ryan hate you even more and bring them even closer. You're not thinking at all. Your career is already hanging on a thread because of your screw-up. Eva grins at you evilly. Your life is about to go up in flames, Jasmine, and I'm here for the show. Eva, I don't care about my career. I just want my baby back. Tell me where she is, please. There has to be something I can do for you. Eva swallows the rest of her wine in one gulp. Then she tosses the glass at your feet where it shattered. There's nothing you can do, Jasmine, and I'm not giving that baby back to you. Besides, she's not even here. Eva has gone crazy, like psycho. What? All I've been doing is wasting your time. Eva's evil grin gets even wider. Your baby is in a car somewhere in New York. You should probably go look for her, but by the time you find her, she'll already be dead. I don't think that Eva is that stupid and psycho and that crazy to harm an innocent life. I think she's just saying that to scare Jasmine because I don't... I don't think she got the guts like that. I don't. I don't think Eva has the guts at all to even harm that baby. So if Jasmine can use her brain properly, just be like, okay, she got to be bluffing. I know she's not going to hurt an innocent child. She's just using that against me for her pleasure. So, um, so far, the, excuse me, the story was going awesome. Great. I'm so glad she had her baby. We got to see the baby. We named the baby. They were happy. Now we're really finding out a lot about what's been going on in the story from Eva right now. And now we're in another pickle. Now we have to find Jasmine's baby. Because if it ain't one thing, it's another. And Jasmine just, again, always seems to have to go through something bad. But if you did enjoy this chapter, please give this video a like. It would help my channel out so much. Have, if you have not subscribed to the Rare Brief fam, do that. Do that now. Because you need a family to join. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you won't miss another juicy video.